Hi, I'm James, this is Malt and Make, and today we're going to make a workshop apron. I got the idea for this video from Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. It's a great video about making a workshop apron, but it's also about how practicing a skill that you're not very good at is important. Go and check him out, there's a link down below. I went to a place called Goldhawk Road in London, which is really famous for its fabric shops, but there's no reason you couldn't buy this online. I asked Naomi to help give me a hand putting down the dining room table so I could lay it all out flat. And this is the wax cotton. The first thing to do was to cut it to size, and I used an apron that I already had to give me a rough guide. If you don't already have an apron, then you can probably just make the pattern up yourself. It's a fairly simple shape, more or less a rectangle with some cutouts for the arms narrowing up to the neck. The first thing to do was to cut out a rough rectangle the size of the apron. Now be sure not to put it right into the corners, because you're going to need to leave some space around the outside, which is called a seam allowance. And I've got this really handy tool that, using some carbon copy paper, or yellow copy paper in this case, transfers an exact seam based on the side. And while it's easy to do on a straight edge, using a curve this tool makes it much easier. For fabric like this, I find a rotary cutting tool works really well. They're not that expensive, and if you're planning to do any form of sewing, it's a worthwhile investment. If you're going to use one, make sure you do it on a cutting mat, because it takes quite a lot of force to get these to cut, but the results work really well in the end. Remember, you're cutting along the outside line here. That's the bit that you're going to fold over to give you a nice clean seam with no frayed edges. It's simply a case of just cutting along each individual bit, but a little tip I'd suggest is try folding it in half. That way you'll end up with something that's really symmetrical. Once everything was cut out, I used the pinwheel tool again to mark the seam line, where I'm going to fold it over. Luckily on this wax cotton, it actually leaves an imprint that you can see here. If you take your time with marking out the seams, it's going to really pay off later. This is the difference between a scrappy project and one that looks really professional. And while I can't say I'm a professional, at least I can try. And a tool like this makes your life a lot easier later on. To give the apron a bit more substance, I'm going to put this quilted fabric on the back. All I've done is laid out the apron, and now I'm just going to cut out the fabric to fit. Because this fabric has a padded backing, I decided not to use the transfer paper. Instead, just using a fine line permanent marker, marking up against the apron so that I'd get an exact fit with my wax cotton piece. The rotary cutter worked really well for cutting out that wax cotton, but this quilted fabric's a little bit too thick, so I think I'm gonna use the scissors. Once I'd cut out all the quilting, the next thing I wanted to do was make a pocket for the front of the apron. To give it a bit of contrast, I decided to use a denim, and this one had a red backing, but it was a very similar colour to the wax cotton on the front. Of course, most of you aren't going to have a machine at home that can do embroidery for you, but there's no reason that you couldn't get one online from a company. Lots of places do short runs where you can just buy one patch and sew that on. Alternatively, loads of makers on YouTube have Patreon pages where you can get patches for a certain donation. Oh, uh, that includes me now too. As I said, the back of this denim is red, and I thought it would be a nice touch to see some of that. I rolled the edge over twice to give a clean appearance, and then used the iron just to press it in place before stitching it. To turn this denim patch into a pocket, the first thing I did was pin it so it was central and at the right height. And you can see I've used this little green book as a spacer so it's not pressed completely flat against the apron and you'll be able to get things in afterwards. The next thing you need to do is roll the edge round underneath and hold it in place. Now it's important to think about the order of operations here. I'm going to sew the pocket onto the apron before I put the lining on. The reason for that is that when you put the lining on it will hide the stitches. So it's simply a case of going around the pocket on each of the corners, stitching it in place and then at the end Go backwards and forwards a few times just to secure everything in place so it won't unravel. 
These little clips are a lot easier to use than pins, or at least they're a lot quicker. And all I'm doing now is half rolling over the edge and then rolling it over again just to give a neater seam. And I'm working my way along until I'm done. They can't completely replace pins because they won't work on anything except the edge of fabric. But for things like this, they work really quickly and there's no risk of poking them into your fingers. Then you just need to run around the edge of the apron, making sure you get the quilting and the cotton edge to hold it all together. Since I'm making this apron just for me, there's no need to make the strap adjustable. What I did was cut it roughly to length, pin it in place and then check. But after that, it's a case of sewing it on. I used a slightly different stitch here that would help hold the ends in place, as well as a straight stitch along the top, but you can use what you want. Oh, and before doing the sides, I thought I'd just sew something in that's a little bit special. Just be careful with the needle, it can stick. And here it is, the finished article. I think it looks really great and it feels really good. It's got a good weight to it, thanks to that quilting on the inside and the wax cotton on the outside. With a denim pocket and my Molten Make logo embroidered on there, I think it's gonna be perfect. Now, aside from the pocket, you also saw that I've got a magnet up in the strap here, which I think will work really well, but I'd love to know what you think. I'm gonna make another one of these, so leave a comment down below with what you think and head over to Instagram, that's where we're gonna be making it. Of course, don't forget to check out Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Tell him I sent you, because he's the one who inspired me to make this. I'll see you next time, guys. Click up here for one of my old videos. And give this video a like if you enjoyed it. See you next time.